I remember just that image of these two guys coming in and just dominating the gym. Like, this is our gym now. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly like, what I was we decided <laughs> we decided to we decided to come here for a while and it's our gym now. So yeah. hello. Hey everybody, welcome to It's Just Bodybuilding. Dusty Hanshaw, Scott the producer McNally, myself, Big Ron Partlow. Like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. There you go. Ring it. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Remember, IamMutant.com. Go to IamMutant.com. Get your ISO surge. Get your all in. Everyone should get on the gear. And of course, use the code Dusty20, Big Ron20. Either one, they both work, regardless of what Dusty tells you. And of course, the Think Big Patreon. Scott, the producer, has a Patreon for the channel. Keep all these shows rolling. What are, they, what are all the shows again, Scott? Just say I'm in Blood, Sweat, and Gear. Blood, Sweat, and Gear, Muscle Minds, Drugs and Stuff, although we don't actually say that name on the show anymore just to help us you stay monetized. <laughs> We've got all sorts of reaction stuff, you know, with you guys. It's just yep. bodybuilding reacts. I've been doing reacts with John Hansen, and um, we've got a new show with Cuba. So there's, yes. we got a, we got a lot going on. So yeah, yeah. 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 What's the show that's called again? We don't the have show a name. Cuba? We don't even have a name. We've been asking people each week. It's kind of been a, becoming like a What's running it about? thing. We need it's, to. I will create a name. I'm good at this. It's about. I mean, it's about training, Dusty. It's about. I like, think hard training. Training. Oh, you're welcome, Scott. Um, <laughs> Scott's show with Cuba. <laughs> yeah. God, jeez. Yeah. All right. Wow. Okay. Yes, that's, that's it all. Name. Everyone, help and us. And you could just call it SS. Scott's show WK SSWK just get SSWK, SSWK. yeah that's right. it and it could just be SSWK it's Scott's show is with Cuba it's been good it's been good and okay. he's getting ready now too I think for Spain so it we we talk to about training and then we talk about how it applies to him each episode as he's dieting right now I love it perfect I like training with Cuba he trained yeah. real smart it was like the sets were perfect. Um, he didn't do a lot of forced reps. I remember we were just doing one forced rep hmm. per body part. Okay. So like we started with the flex incline. It's on the mutant on a mission episode. And we just go to failure. Like you're just hitting your literally your fail rep where the bark stops. Yeah. And then that's it. And then there was the one set we did a forced rep on. And okay. then the rest of the sets were just a straight ass failure. It was good. I, I thought, ah, oh, I don't break. I'm not going to break training with him. But super smart, and then he's strong as shit. You yeah, know? but like yeah. the form was perfect, and yeah, it was a good workout. And it changes for him. Like we did a show about um, matching your training to your fuel source, to your food, and so how right. do you train during your prep, during you know, like your your recovery phase, during your during your off season, and how does that change? He uses the term um, intensifiers for things like rest, mm -hmm. pause, yeah. drop sets, all of that, and so he'll remove those things when he's in that diet phase to still go to hard failure, but then, you know, gets rid of the, the stuff that would maybe, maybe eat into his strength. So that way he can stay yeah, strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember they sort of do that through the off season too. That was also a Dorian thing. Like I remember Dorian saying that he would do no, no, no forced reps at all for like six weeks at a time sometimes. Mm, yeah. You know, and I think he probably lined it up with like, the, you know, coming the down supplements. Or whatever. the supplements yeah yeah you know <laughs> so okay what's the big topic for today not that that wasn't great but we did have one planned so we dropped a couple really good reaction videos this past week we got the yes. branch warren one out we got the jay cutler one out and uh thank you by the way everybody for your comments and all the likes and stuff people don't realize it but just simply hitting the like button helps youtube to get our show out there so everybody who's watching we appreciate you guys for all that stuff but we got one comment in particular on the branch video and uh oh looks like we lost ron's camera there ron can you still hear us yeah i could still hear you but um i'm nowhere to be seen i'll just leave and come back all right all right He's been doing a lot of leaving, coming back today. What's I don't know going what's going on. on. We're going to have to fire this guy pretty he's soon. He's his life together. I mean, if he yeah. didn't have such good stories, he'd be gone. But I can't tell a story, so he's yeah. back. There yeah. we go. All right. <laughs> All right. So we got this. Uh, one of the comments was, um, I was a teenager training at Max Metroflex during this time. The energy around there was insane. To be 16 year old, years old, seeing these guys every day that you see in the magazines, um, 
on top of the whole industry being all about hardcore training was amazing. That time was my personal golden age of bodybuilding. And that just made me think, imagine what it would be like to learn about bodybuilding at that time in that environment. And it got me thinking, what were the early experiences you guys had uh, you know, coming up in the gym because you guys weren't always big Ron Partlow and uh, DC, you know, Dusty Hanshaw. So what 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 was it like for you? What inspired you guys in the gym? Who did you see? Who were the big guys? Do you remember any stories from back in the day? Of course. I, I got lots. I'll tell I'll tell one. Um, Only one. There's a gym in Calgary. It was called Pro Bodies and it was there for a long time, like. I don't know what year it opened, but it would probably late eighties. And then it was just there like all through the nineties and, you know, two thousands. And, um, whenever I went to Calgary, I would go train at pro bodies and the owner's name was Rick and Rick was like a, a super, you know, big heavyweight bodybuilder. He's he a good guy. And, um, and everybody knew him. And of course, Calgary is where all the wrestling was, oh, right? Yeah. The heart, the hearts lived in Calgary, right? The heart school, Stu Hart had his wrestling school there. Um, Calgary was very, very common to run into high level pro wrestlers that were maybe coming up to see the hearts or, you know, just all that sort of stuff. Right. And of course, stampede wrestling was really big across the country in Canada. That was like a feeder league for the WWF at the time. You know, guys would start in stampede wrestling and they'd be on Canadian television and, you know, the good guys would get pulled down to the States, you know. And so anyways, long story short is you go to pro body sometimes and you'd see like Davy Boy Smith or Jim Neidhart or Bret Hart or, you know, like any of those, like that whole crew of guys, you know, um, training there and david boy smith was like i mean he benched like four plates for reps so yep. you know you're like 17 years old and you go to pro bodies because you're like oh i'm going to the big bodybuilder gym in the big city yeah and you get there and david boy smith's there benching four plates for reps and like laughing ah, you know and his, <laughs> his accent he's like just like what a crew you know there was like there was pro football players in there and all the bodybuilders from that city trained there and of course the older guys <clears throat> but you'd go in there and I remember there was one guy who had a gray beard, so I knew he was like 50. And he was moving like the 150 dumbbells, just hauling them off on the incline. Like, And this was in like 94. Like you didn't see 50-year-old dudes grabbing 150s and just smashing them for sets of 10 and, you know, that sort of stuff. And it's everybody squatting five plates. and <laughs> But just seeing the pro wrestlers in there was, uh, you know, I remember Brutus the Barber Beefcake was in there one day. No, like kidding. just mm -hmm. hilarious, but the, like superstars, right? Like, you know, Hulk Hogan trained there. I mean, everybody went there. Macho Man went there to train. Everybody went there when they were in Calgary, you know? So, uh, but I remember just seeing those guys and, you know, I'm a bodybuilder, but these guys are like superstars, you know, to, especially to a kid, you know, like, like back in those days, you see a WWF superstar in the gym and you're just like, damn, you know, and they were larger than life. You know, Davy Boy was big. He's bodybuilder big. That's cool. So how old were you? How old were you? Did you say when you went there? Uh, uh, well, I would have been like, I would have been like anywhere between seventeen and twenty three. Okay. You know, every so time you, I went you to were Calvary, big. You were big by then. You were. Oh yeah, I was getting big. Oh yeah. 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 I was getting big. Yeah, for sure. So. But they were bigger because it was Davy Boy Smith, man. <laughs> Bench of four plates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The British bulldog, man. You know. It's awesome. How about you, Dusty? Um, you know, so when I first moved back to Arizona, when my hockey days were done, I walked into, I found a Gold's gym, and it happened to be the gym in the East Valley of Arizona that all the bodybuilders went to. And I remember walking in and, and just seeing bodybuilders for the first time, like, good good bodybuilders um and, and it was it was i kind of followed bodybuilding indirectly like most kids our age did back then like even though i wasn't big into it i would buy the magazines every now and then i knew who sean ray was and kevin Leroni and ronnie coleman and jay Cut, all these guys prior to getting into bodybuilding because you just kind of somewhat watched it was like watching superheroes so seeing them in the flesh was really wild and I remember it clicking that that's what I wanted to do. I was like, okay, mm. if I can't play hockey anymore, 
I want to look like that. I just want to be a freak, you know? And so I was 20 and I would, I was kind of watching from the distance, seeing what they were doing, but more just impressed. Cause when you've never seen someone in shape and the body move, it is different. Like to us now, you don't think any of it, but seeing someone in shape and, but just something as simple as a curl and watching the bicep and the brachialis and everything move like blew your mind. So we had just moved back. I got into the gym. I was staying at my mom's for a couple of weeks waiting for my apartment to uh, open up. So we get our, get our apartment and it's a nice place. It's got a pool. So I go down to the pool and I'm sitting there and I'm laying by the pool. And all of a sudden I see this guy walk in and I consider myself a relatively straight man. And uh, he took his shirt relatively. off relatively, and his yeah. wife had a ridiculous body. And I was not watching her. I was completely like, that's the guy from the gym. And now his shirt is off. And it's freakier than I thought. I mean, because he was in shape. And I'm just like, how is this real life? So a few months go by and I decided, screw it. I'm committing. And I went up to him in the gym. I knew his name at this point. And I was like, hey, Robert. His name's Robert Farrow. He's still, he has his own gym now in Arizona. He helps so many people but i was like i want to get huge how do i do it and this is where things changed from back then to now he didn't want to talk to me about you know the perfect grams of this or that he grabbed a piece of paper a pen and he wrote out a diet and one of the meals was to go to jack in a box every day and get (laughs) two Two chicken fajita pitas, double chicken, side of fries, and it's like a slice of cheesecake. That was one of my meals, and I did it every day as if Dang. that was the only thing I could eat. I was like, done. And uh, so that was the beginning of me starting to get big into bodybuilding. And what made it really cool was um, fast forward, I don't know, a decade, and uh, I got him ready for his last show when he did uh, Masters Nationals and he missed his pro card by a point. Oh, you're oh, kidding. No way. Yeah. And That's I mean, it was, it, was, it was wild because I'm like, I'm prepping you now. That's yeah. interesting. But, uh, but and he got nasty and he always did. I mean, you, you look back at how bodybuilding has changed because there were less shows back then. Mm-hmm. So when you would go to a show, they were stacked. I mean, there'd be 15 guys coming to win. Well, there's only bodybuilding yeah. too, you, you know? know, and it was a, it, it, you remember, Ron, I mean, you'd go to the shows and it was like after prejudging, there'd be, everybody be out front like, oh, I got him. I got this guy. So it was, it was really cool to come up like that and see those guys. And, and I still look back and think of that. So when you're, when you're in the gym now, I, I think you start to realize that there are probably kids and people watching you that you don't know. Cause I mean, I didn't say a word to them for months. Yeah. I just kind of watched from the side, like man you know so there was that and unlike ron i have to give two stories because there's one that just changed my life forever which getting ready for my first show and seeing the guy who was going to win the overall a few weeks later walk out from the bathroom in just his trunks i was like we aren't doing the same thing (laughs) (laughs) and uh and i was in his i was in his class and it was it was awesome i mean just seeing because you know then and there i think again that's a change that i don't know that everyone has is i was like i need to know what he's doing and not doing to be that Mm -hmm. lean i'm not talking about the size i wasn't worried about that but he was peeled and i worked hard and i was lean and i'm like okay there's something to be learned here, you know? And again, I think the the big takeaway that I hope this guy had that, that was watching them is all these guys were down to help me. Yeah. I just ask, you know, I mean, this was, I didn't ask them to like prep me, but if I had a question, they would answer, you know? And then it got to the point yeah. where if I was doing something stupid, they'd come tell me, like, I knocked that off. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, those are, those are good times, right? I mean, as soon as I read that, question i'm like oh i could go for an hour and a half on my own on all these stories i figured you could that's why i wanted to ask you guys yeah i i i'll I'll do a second quick one that away yes i'll be quick um so i remember one day i was at the gym i was in high school like grade 11 
And uh, it was like super, super cold out, like minus 30 Celsius. Like, you know, you die outside if you're not wearing the right clothes, you know. Canada cold. Yeah, Canada cold. You know, four feet of snow, the plows, have, it's just snow banks everywhere. You know, the snow CC. plows have been... Snow plows have been up and down the street and setting the scene. It's just like winter, absolute Canadian winter, right? You're trudging through the snow up the sidewalk to get to the gym door because they haven't been able to shovel it fast enough. Like crazy. And I'm looking out the window between sets and the window's covered in frost. Like the corners have thick frost in them and it's like I'm setting the scene, right? And the gym is very humid inside because, of course, you know, the conditions like everyone's, you know, steam coming off them when they walk in the door and it's like super cold. Anyways. This little festiva or festive festiva or whatever. The car? Yeah, the little three yeah, cylinders. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Ford yeah, festiva yeah. Maybe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It pulls up out front and it's like having a hard time on the road because there's like so much snow. It's been plowed, but it's like, you know, kind of sliding around. And the guy parks it right in front of the gym and these two huge monsters get out. Like they're both 250. <laughs> And back in like 1991, there weren't a lot of 250 pound monsters, right? These two guys get out big, uh, like army green winter jackets with the hoods up. Yeah. And like, uh, and work boots and the Gators gym pants tucked into the work boots. Mm. And they get out and they get their bags and it's in this little tiny car. So it's just visually hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's visually very impactful. And I'm like, what these two huge monsters has got out of that little Ford Festiva? This is ridiculous. And they come up to the gym. I'd never seen them before. Turns out they they had been at another gym for years, but they just wanted to try the other gym because there's only two main gyms in town. And they just came to my gym and I just hadn't seen them yet. And they came in, you know, stomping the boots, snow off their boots. And like everyone turns they're like, who are these two guys? And they, you know, start, they get a day pass or whatever take off the winter jackets. They got the Gators gym, California body wear, you know, the uh, tank tops with the boat neck shirts, big, huge guys, 250 pounds each. And the one, they, one guy's got long, like brown hair, you know, like kind of a hockey mullet. And then the other guy's got like Conan hair, but it's blonde, like long hair. They both had long hair. So they look like barbarians. Like they were like the closest thing I'd ever seen to the barbarian brothers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they come I mean, in. That's who I was straight. picturing, by yeah, the way. That's it's you know? like I'm just thinking like, oh, we have a we have a set of Barbarian brothers at this gym right now. Like I'm in like that's what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> yeah. And they come in and they throw the bar on the rack. They pull this pull the safeties out, right? Old school. Zing. Oh yeah. Pull the Don't want those. Out. Zing. Both safeties come out. And they start squatting the bar and they start stacking plates against the rack. Ding, ding, getting them ready, making sure no one takes yeah, their yeah. plates. And they put five plates on the floor on each side. And I'm like, oh, shit. And remember, 1991, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so I'm like, these guys are getting down to business. And they, you know, one plate for 10, two plates for 10, three plates for 10, four plates for 10. And it's a grind. And then they throw the five plates on, wrap up the knees, like hardcore, like, you know what I mean? And everyone in the gym is like, ah. And I mean, I, don't, I was already training hard and there were already bodybuilders in the gym, but these two guys just showed up. They're stealing the show. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and they five plate it. They both five plates. They get like at least six to six to eight reps each. You know, they're, you know, hollering and making noise. And yeah. And after they're done the five, they do a back off set. Like they're not even thinking like the terms we use. It's just how they train. Right. And then yeah. and then they finish squatting and they go over to leg press and they keep their workout going. And I remember just that image of these two guys coming in and just dominating the gym. Like, this is our gym now. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what i was thinking you know yeah, what i mean exactly what like, I was we decided <laughs> we decided to we decided to come here for a while and it's our gym now so yeah. hello and uh, it was just so um, it's such a crazy visual to me at that age i wound up becoming really great friends with the one dude the other guy moved away kevin moved away but eric i mean eric's like a lifelong friend of mine and um and it's just, I, 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 I tell that story to people sometimes because I'll never forget those two monsters getting out of that Festiva and how, how insane the whole gym changed when they came in and started squatting. It was like everyone was on notice. They were like, oh, of course, no collars. They used to rattle the plates like crazy. You yeah, know? Oh, man. Yeah, just awesome. Do the, uh, the plastic plates don't rattle. No, so you no, no. Just yeah, like it was, you know, and they, they, they wouldn't like, <laughs> I remember they'd squat and like one of the plates might wiggle out a little too far. Oh yeah, yeah. and they just keep squatting. Like, yeah. just, that's just 
part of the functional fitness element of squatting with no collars. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they were thinking. Functional. Make yeah. it functional. Yeah. Eric LaRue and Kevin Jones. I'll never forget those two guys. It's crazy. That's amazing. We had a we had a, a, a couple of guys. Uh and, and I became friends with one of them, Scott Hughes. And I had seen Scott Hughes since back at Powerhouse Canton. So after I got serious into bodybuilding, I started going to Powerhouse. I wanted to go to a Powerhouse gym. And there was like a Powerhouse gym and literally at the time every city around me you could go to powerhouse westland you go to powerhouse livonia you go to powerhouse canton and then they had one up in farmington hills so i chose canton it wasn't that far from me it was a good gym they all were about the same they all were outfitted like in the 90s had like the full hammer strength lineup you know the 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 incline hammer the flat hammer the decline hammer you'd see those three at every gym every single one of these gyms had everything about the same maybe one of them would have like the hammer shrug machine and the other one would have something else, you know, something random like that. But I remember Scott was in there with his brother and his dad would train at the same time. Now his dad was really old. Like I'm talking, I'm talking like hobbling over, but he would spend about a good half hour at the, uh, at the squat rack and he'd load that thing up as heavy as he could. I can't remember what he was doing, but he was at least doing a few plates. Like he was, he was pushing at least a couple plates. I think maybe getting into three and he, he'd only do like one rep though, but just keeping his strength. But Scott, on the other hand, he was a big guy like him and his brother. They were both like taller, stockier guys, like kind of like, like your build, Ron, just like a taller guy, wider frame, you know? And they were both really strong, but Scott kept training. And so we kind of follow each other around. Like after Canton closed down, we both went over to Novi, you know, so I'd see him. I'd known him for years. He got to be really big too, like super heavy, big. And uh, the thing about him is he got, he was so loud. He was so loud. He would get kicked out of gyms because he made so much noise. It was like, it was like to the point where it was, it was too much. You know what I mean? Like it was right. over the top, but like powerhouse farming to, or powerhouse Novi was the world headquarters, 60,000 square foot gym. When you're over at the counter and you're checking in and they're trying to, they were trying to make it into like more like a fitness club kind of feel because yeah. it's the world headquarters. It's in a very nice area. And Scott is literally the other side of a 60,000 square foot gym around a corner and down a ways. And you could hear him squatting from that front, like while you're checking it. Like, oh, yeah, Scott's <laughs> oh, no. here. So, yeah, he ended up getting kicked out probably a handful of times. In fact, do you remember, Ron, we did that that um, that podcast years ago? I called it the death of the hardcore gym. And I interviewed you. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I interviewed Scott too about getting kicked out of gyms on that same episode. Oh, <laughs> uh, no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, but he's a cool dude. Funny. He's a cool dude. And I still remember when I was getting serious into it, watching him training, just thinking, oh my God, those guys are so freaking strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. First time you see somebody repping five plates on the squat when you're a kid. Yeah. Like, it's like, whew. Yeah. You know, you're putting like, you know, you're squatting two plates and you're just right? like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. We got some listener questions, buddy. Guys, we have a bunch of listener questions. And I want to remind everybody to comment below because we can always use more. Um, yes. So we did get a, this was more of a comment. This was on the Jake Cutler one. He said, do you guys think there's a chance you could invite Aceto on the show? We've had him on a couple times. Third time's the charm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've had him on twice. We've had him on twice. And uh, he had the same technology both times on his side. Um, (laughs) (laughs) We're hoping that eventually technology gets to the point where, where Chris doesn't have to think about it at all. It just happens for him automatically. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start requiring one of his kids be there with him. Right, to run and the thing for him. Because your youngest son there, perfect. Have him yeah. set this up. <laughs> yeah. All right, question for the next show. Um, you only have bands and dumbbells backstage, maybe a pull-up bar. What would your pump-up routine be? And I, when, when I thought about that, I thought of my first show where they actually had like an entire, one of the local gyms would bring all the weights and there would be yeah. a room where they, do you guys remember that? They'd have all the yep, real weights yep. there. They don't do that anymore so much for state shows. Yeah. Um, I have, yeah, I don't need dumbbells at all. I mean, yeah. back in the day we had them. Because it was cool. What they would supply, it'd be a bunch of dumbbells on the floor, but I would just need like a set of 20s. Yeah. 15s even. And I would just like mm-hmm. 
and do some push-ups. But you got to remember the day of the show, you only have so much blood. Like you yeah, can't yep. pump every body part, right? And you know, there's, I think quads and triceps can lose detail if you pump them too much. I think usually yeah. sometimes lats, some guys are lats get crazier when they pump them. So you only have so much blood. So, you know, you just got to kind of look at your physique and say like, you know, do I need to pump my delts? Like maybe your delts are crazy and your pecs are kind of flat. So I would just do like a bunch of push-ups and try to drive more blood to your chest. So think think that way. Like what actually makes you look better? You know, when you pose after your workouts, do you look better on delt day? Do you look better on chest day? Do you look crazy on how your back look nuts when it's pumped? Or does it kind of lose detail and fog out a bit? So it's just, I don't know, know your body. You don't have to pump everything. Bands are plenty. We used to use a towel. Just get yeah. two guys with a towel and you'd row with the lats, do lat rows of the towel, or you do the buddy laterals and the one guy's doing his delts and the other guy's doing his pecs and do buddy laterals. We used to do that. And then just some push ups. you know, get the veins in your arms going, do some, you know, band curls and you're good. I, th I think the biggest, the first thing I would say regarding pumping up in general is you need to be ready to pose. Do not have a yeah. workout backstage and yeah. then be shocked when you're exhausted for posing. <laughs> I mean, like it's, 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 it, you, and you will see it even at the national level with um, newer people. I'll watch them and they're like working out over there and I haven't even gotten oil yet. I'm just sitting yeah. in the corner, waiting, waiting. Um, my entire routine prior to going on stage would be when they said, okay, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I was like, okay, so we have 25 more minutes because they're always way too early. Right, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait till the very end and then literally i would do lateral raises with the um with the bands some curls and then just leaning into a bench some close grip push-ups and i was ready to go like it doesn't yeah. take and then when i'm waiting in line i would just kind of like squeeze squeeze muscle do a row with no weight squeeze your back and you'd be good to go so i i think if anything, I would recommend uh, underdoing it to overdoing it. We, I ordered yeah. bands for Nikki to have backstage. I'm like, here's your bands. You're going to need to work on these for three and a half minutes. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, uh, <clears throat> pumping up is technically overrated. It's over-focused on. Yeah. Um, I think that posing, you should run through several rounds of poses. Like, don't yeah. kill yourself and over, but you got to really get all your tissue moving and stuff is good. Flexing and squeezing, it's like Dusty said. But, you know, when you do your videos, I mean, so here's something. You should be videoing your posing, right? Yep. And you should be yep. doing multiple rounds and you should be thinking to yourself, oh, I always look better on my third round. Mm. My back yep. and glutes are always tighter after. So then do those rounds backstage right like some people don't think of that they're like oh yeah i look great in my pictures when i take the fourth video and screenshot it right yep. so yeah, yeah. If they only Plan. do one round that'll land you in fourth place um yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> i like the my i found one that nobody ever told me hey you should do upright rows but for me Upright rows just kind of like filled everything out up top plus got yeah. my biceps. So for me, upright rows were always one that I'd always do with the band. And it's yeah. just I figured, hey, this looks really good for me because it kind of hit like everything from that, like shoulder girdle plus the biceps. I was like, mm -hmm. I like I like this one a yoked lot. Yoked you out. Yes. Yoked me out. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they had um, there was a show when I when I went on my grand tour in 2017 and I was like, I'm going to do a show in L.A. And, and and uh they had the pump up area in the back and then the door was open so you could go outside in the sun and pump up with the heat coming down on you and stuff yeah 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 that was a good feel it was because detroit you really didn't have any of those options there's no go out in the sun especially if it's like a, an april show you know what i mean there is no sun. yeah yeah there is no <laughs> I, I sun i remember i was at a show one time and i was uh it was night show and uh, we were just backstage and there was this one old guy. He's like a master. Yeah. And he was covered in veins, like just sick in the morning. I saw him and he just fucking, he's just one of those guys, right? Yeah. And then he, he comes walking around the corner at the night show and he's even crazier. And I go, dude, what did you eat? And he goes, oh, no, I've just been standing in the sun. <laughs> he, he found like a side door he's like this old yeah. veteran and he's like, yeah. I'm looking for some heat. You know, like remember Dave Pusinelli used to take the blow dryer? 
Yeah, yep. yeah. He had the yeah. blow dryer thing. Just put, yeah. So he's like, "Nah, I found a door. I got some sun on me. Look at my quads." And he's like, "Show me." <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's my amazing. old man impression, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Your impressions are you know. becoming infamous, so keep those rolling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, sound, yeah he sounded like a sailor. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> I did. I, Maybe I'm, he was. <laughs> I'm thinking I did have one. One. I got a story. I got to tell you guys. This was at the Redford Theater in Detroit. So this is a, this is a pretty, they stopped doing shows at the Redford, by the way. Um, and, and part of it was like kind of, the, this? yeah, because <laughs> yeah, of this, because of this incident, because <laughs> of the, because of the crime, they stopped doing shows there and they, they kind of took it out to the suburbs, but it's a beautiful old theater. And um, it, 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 I, can, I can tell you all about that. But the story was the backstage sucked. It was like the size of my office. And there's like one light bulb hanging down and the walls are painted black. So you can't see anything back there. And everybody's mm -hmm. trying to pump up. And I know we had 15 minutes. The other option was to like walk behind the curtain, the, the back of the stage, along the curtain, along the wall. And then it opened up to this other side. But it, mm -hmm. you, if you, there was nobody to tell you, like when your when your class was going on. So if you got caught over there, you're going to be screwed. Anyway, I couldn't see anything. I needed to put oil on, and this guy. I kept running into the same guy. We kept doing the same shows. He was from like another part of Michigan. Never saw him any other time. Facebook wasn't even super popular yet, but we'd run into each other at the shows, and we'd always compete against each other. I was like, hey, what's up, man? You know. So him and I we were like, hey, let's go outside. And we'll put our oil on outside. We've got 15 minutes. So we walked through, we had to walk through the front of the, the theater and walk out the front doors, walk down the sidewalk, and then walk over to the alleyway where, where we're going to, to, to do our tans. And there's a, it's hot, okay? It's a summer day. There's a bunch of people from the hood all hanging out all over the streets. I'm in my flip flops and some purple underwear. <laughs> covered in paint and so is this other guy you know oh boy nice <laughs> nice thinking guys this is gonna we go over well out. people were yelling at us they're like put on some dick he's like put on some goddamn clothes stuff like that we're hearing all this stuff and we were just like oh shit we're back there putting oil on each other and everything they uh yeah, that was that, that was a good see. day. Yeah, it was her first erotic show in the neighborhood from two men uh, yeah. pulling the Robert Downey Jr. Um, it's something you would expect to see in San Francisco, not Detroit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> frowned upon in Detroit for sure. That's amazing. That yeah. that was that's that's the lead story right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scott and another guy in the alleyway. At least, that yeah, like yeah. Title, title of the show: Two guys yeah, and some lube in an alley. Wait, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. The yeah. bright side: If if I was the type of guy that was gonna like try to rob people, I would probably just want to keep distance from both of you. Oh yeah, that's one yeah. good thing. Like I don't know, no one's gonna run up to you and try to touch you. What are they gonna you take? Know? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. get I gotta tell you one more then, because remember when we we're talking about weird tans? We we're talking about like how tans are weird. So yeah. I, I may have told you guys this a long time ago. I know I told it, but it's been years on another show that my girlfriend and I were going to the night show. And I'm I, this is back when you did your own tan. So it's not super even. It doesn't look really good, right? And I've got my hoodie on. I had the same old rotten hoodie that I would wear to every show because it would just get yep. messed up. And I'm sitting in the passenger seat and she, we had to get gas. So I'm sitting there like this, just in the passenger seat and... She gets out of the car. We're driving to the Redford Theater, rough area. So we stop and get gas. Happens to be a rough area. Some lady starts walking over to the car. And I, you could tell she's down on her luck. It looks like she's strung out. And she's no question. She's going to be like, hey, do you have $5? You know, something like that. And she gets close to the car. And I look up at her. And she makes eye contact with me and literally stops <laughs> and turns around and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> i might be down on my luck but this guy's way worse she didn't know what to think she was like yeah no we're not gonna we're not gonna talk with him you good. looked like a cracked out meth head with his hood up yeah, face so your face in. sunk in yeah yeah covered in dirt yeah, yeah. She, she was like oh this probably car got already has a car without her knowing yeah yeah <laughs> So this car already has a homeless person in it. I'll just walk away. <laughs> That's what it pretty much looks like. Yeah. Seats taken. <laughs> Seats taken. <Yeah. laughs> so anyway, that was oh. my... I, I was going to tell you guys that the other week, but I, I just... We, we were out of time at the moment there. <laughs> Should have made time for that one. 
Yeah, that was good. How about this? What's the best exercise or exercises to bring out the Adonis belt or the lower abs slash obliques? Oh, it's body fat levels. Yeah. yeah. Get leaner. I mean, yeah, get leaner. Just got to get leaner. You know, if, you know, if your abs suck, train your abs too. You yeah. know, some guys have big brick abs. They don't really need to do crunches and stuff. But if you don't have those, um, you know, might help once you get lean enough. But, you know, lift heavy and hard. You should have core muscles. Yeah. All right. So here's one that I, I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. Jerry asks us, he says, um, have you guys posted on a timeline, social media page or somebody, uh, uh, somebody's famous and they actually respond and you end up having a conversation and then you think to yourself, holy crap, I'm actually talking to so-and-so. I've been posting on the net since the 90s, and I'm still enamored at how easy it is to have a conversation with people these days that never would have happened in years prior. So it's got into a conversation with Robert Irvin, Josh Gates, and a few others, and was absolutely blown away. If possible, maybe give examples outside of bodybuilding. Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work. Hmm. That's an interesting idea, like interesting thing that could happen i don't necessarily know if i could think of anyone outside of bodybuilding that i've corresponded with online um who's like crazy famous you know yeah i, I have talked to a lot of, i've talked to a lot of people that are really great like i've talked to a lot of people that are maybe world you know world champions at what they do yeah mm -hmm. um but you know um i wouldn't say they're famous i haven't had like a you know, I don't have an Instagram thread going with Ryan Reynolds or anything like that. You know, although he is from Vancouver. You don't. That's pathetic. <laughs> I do. But no, yeah, I, I'm the same because I, I don't. I mean, I, I just don't interact. Um, the yeah, I don't comment. Thing enough. that I can, you know, can think of is, and it wasn't like a starstruck thing. It's just the realization, like when you're training in in Gold's Venice back in the day you quickly realize what a lot of people don't understand, which is that people are just people. I mean, you, when you're training at Gold's Venice, you will run into like A-list celebrities and they're like, I got a spot because they need a spot. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It, it's, it's Who did you really, spot then? Who, who, you know, who have you spotted? Uh, actually, the, 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 I think the coolest, I didn't spot, but the coolest person that I've uh, met and seen train was John Cena because he is an animal. Yeah, that was oh, it. Yeah. Uh, that was actually in San Diego at World's Gym back in the day, which is now called the Gym. Um, uh, he would go into the gym and train like any of us, like an animal, yeah. and leave. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's no, there is zero celebrity with that guy. Yeah, other that's than cool. That he is a celebrity, and it's it's. I mean, that's another one where you look over. There's John Cena squatting five plates. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but he, it's, I think that's the main takeaway, obviously, because it's not in line with his comments, but you do just realize, like, of course, if you have something to say that, you know, hits them as something they're interested in or have an opinion on, you know, it is nothing to them. They're not thinking, like, oh, I'm talking to this peasant. They're yeah. like, oh, good, good, good yeah. thought. I didn't think about that, you know? My very first time to Gold's Venice, I ran into Rowdy Roddy Piper and, he was like, you know, and I was a wrestling fan in the 80s and 90s, right? So, you know, I'm at the gym and I go to use this machine and this older guy's on. He's got his hood up and he's kind of got a limp and he's doing curls. And I just go, hey, uh, how many sets you got left? And he goes, all right, let's work in. And then I'm like, oh, it's Roddy Roddy Piper. No and kidding. so I did a set and then he kind of chatted and I had a Canadian flag on my belt. And okay. He goes, oh, can you go from Canada? And I was like, yeah, he goes, oh, awesome, man. And he like shook my hand. And then, like, I went and I wound up actually training arms with Craig Titus that day, which is another story. And then afterwards, um, I think it was maybe the next day, I saw Roddy again, and he walked me down to uh, Max Muscle. No kidding. Um, yeah. Like, Rowdy's like, I, I go, hey, do you, he's sitting on the bench outside with this dude. And I go, hey, do you know where, where Max Muscle is? And he goes, oh, yeah, I'll walk you down. We're going to eat. <laughs> And so I just walked with Rowdy Roddy Piper, like on the street down. And then he goes, it's right there. And then he goes, the firehouse is right there. And I was like, oh, awesome. You know, but I'd already been to firehouse with Craig the day before. So I was like, ah, that was a fun trip. I mean, 
yeah. But, but yeah, but it's just funny, you know, like Rowdy Roddy Piper. And, and you're right. You're like Dusty said, like, maybe it's something about the gym. Like you see a celebrity in other settings. It's different. Mm. You see him at the gym and as a gym person, you're like, huh, that's like, I'm not going to bug that person. It says like sacred time, you know, like I get it. They're just like me. The gym maybe is a little bit of a different type of place to see a, a celebrity, yeah. you know, maybe brings everything down to the same level a little more. Maybe. I don't know. Gravity that. will do that to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 200 pounds is 200 pounds, man. So I kind of lied. That wasn't the question I was really excited to hear your, your opinions on. <laughs> <laughs> but as I started reading it, I was like, "Oh yeah, hey, this, this is a wrestling show." By the way, it's, we've co we've covered a lot of wrestlers today. Yeah, we really yeah, have a lot of wrestling. Haven't we? Yeah, just, just wrestling. accidental wrestling edition. Sorry about that. All right, how about this one? Um, here's a question: Given Dusty's joke about posting a client's pictures without permission, and because I've seen it, um, uh, it says about four <laughs> times now, a coach posts their clients' AM check-ins with a complete. Uh, complete with a, a toilet seat donut imprint on the back shot. Um, and I wondered, should a client expect that their check-in photos will be posted without notice? I was uh, rather irritated that the coach outed me uh, before, uh, outed my before and after. Oh, okay. So it happened to him too, um, which I, I, I don't dare post publicly myself. He says, irritated, no, never... not horrified. I've never done that. If never. if I especially, I mean, doesn't matter who it is. It's brutal. If if I yeah. want to, first off, usually I only share anything you see on my page means they've already shared it. Yeah, I'm just reposting. Yeah, yeah. Um, or if they have like a really good transformation, I'll ask for permission. Like, hey, no pressure, but I'm, and I'll just tell them like, it's not even about me. Just super proud of your work, and I'd like to put yeah. it up. And yeah, no one's ever said no, but I've never. It's like Ron said last episode this is not part of the deal that's stealing at that point like if they want to be shared then absolutely and the same thing i tell clients in the beginning like if you tag me i will reshare if you don't i just yeah. assume you don't want people to know we work together and that's fine that that's poor taste of a coach to do that yeah, yeah i this whole thing like i i, I don't know I, I i hear stories like okay uh you have to put my name in your bio and uh, all photos sent to me are my property. Yeah. Um, like this whole thing, like, fuck. Like, just coach the person. Like, I don't care if anyone even says my name. I could give less of a shit. Like, you could go win your show. Obviously, it's nice if you say thank you. But, yeah. like, you don't have to put up a post. You don't have to tag me. If you do, I'd be very happy to share it. But that's just, yeah, I don't know. That stuff kind of irritates me. Especially Start when that's putting like things newer. in the background and the foreground that they won't repost. I think that will help you a lot. Yeah. Or, yeah, just <laughs> tell them, like, hey, don't, I don't know. I'd be mad, like, if I was this person who doesn't want to even post them themselves. Right? Yeah. Like, it's one thing if you're, like, a world champion. Like, I'm sure Milos can throw up a photo of Regan without asking him. Right. Like, yeah. Like, like, it's not, <laughs> there's a difference, yeah, right? Totally different thing. But, for sure. Yeah, you know, you're someone getting ready for a show. Maybe you're self-conscious about your, you know, you think your hamstrings are small or you don't want to get flamed or whatever. Like, coach, the coach can't just go blasting everybody. Look, look at my work, you know? Yeah. I, know. I, I consider that similar to when people decide randomly to screenshot a private conversation over text and post it. I'm like, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. That was, like, every time I see it, I just cringe. I'm like... I don't think that was meant to be public or it would be reply all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've had that happen to me. I have had that happen yeah. to me. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, you know, luckily I didn't say anything dumb, but it's, the person was just like, oh, look, this person agrees. You know, Ron agrees with me. And they posted a screenshot. And I was like, oh, good thing it wasn't anything terrible. Oh, I did it to you guys the other day. Do you remember that? Did you? Yeah, well, Ron saw it. Dusty didn't because he's he's not he's not part of the the Facebook group. Remember that oh. comment was uh, there was there was a question in the group. It was something like, um, "What if Ron and Dusty were a couple? Who would be the top?" Something that was. <laughs> remember that? And I screen capped that and I sent it to you guys. You guys had a couple funny jabs, and I screen capped oh, that and I posted it. I was like, "Here's their response, guys." Oh, oh so, yes. well, yeah. see, that's a Regan Milos moment. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're trying to promote the overall goodness of the show, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think, too, like you were saying, Ron, though, that if anybody wants to read, like, like when you reach a certain point where your whole life is on the internet, I don't need permission. Like, you don't need to ask me permission to put anything up. Right. But, yeah. I, but I still do think, because I had a client one time, I'm just going to add one more insult, that uh, decided it would be a good idea to post a cycle. Dusty has me using. I'm oh, like, yeah. Whoa. No, Dusty said if you lived in a country where it was legal and hypothetically you were going to do these things, this is what you would do. This is what Dusty would do <laughs> if you were in that yeah. situation. If it were me and I was in this legal, I was like, yeah. I literally call, I immediately reached out. I'm like, you're an idiot. I mean, I wasn't even nice. I'm like, yeah. no, absolutely not. What are you doing? We don't live in England. This is different. So, yeah, yeah. but yeah, you got to use your head a hair <clears> and uh, the coaches really do tend to think there's some sort of ownership. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, you don't need to write how many client wins you have and post it on a big board and a big picture and say, I've won 562 shows because you haven't. You've won none. Anyways, <laughs> moving on from our earlier conversation. What do you guys think of this? <laughs> what do you guys think of like, um, I've had people say to me, um, like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, like, I don't have a coach right now. Well, I kind of do, but I don't. And I'm like, what do you mean you kind of do? And they're like, well, I signed up with this one guy for six months, so I still owe him. I still, I'm still paying him for another two months. But like I told him, I didn't want to work with him anymore. But I can't really afford another coach right now because I'm still paying this other guy for another two months. What is he reaching out to you then, or what? What do you well, mean? Well, theoretically, but I'm just giving you the uh, conversation. Yeah, like yeah, I want to get a new coach, but I can't right now because I'm still paying this other guy. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, well, I signed up for six months. I'm oh. Like, but what do you mean? You sign, like he's got you on like a contract, like a gym. Yeah. How does that work? I don't know. Yeah, they, I think that's just ridiculous. A like, lot just of them do fire it. Fire him. Just message I, yeah. him and go, I'm not going to work with you anymore. And he goes, okay, cool. And he turns your payment off. That's how hard yeah. it should be. Yeah. Yeah. No, I had a guy when I was in a coma that had to go to another coach that uh, part of the deal while I was in a coma, knowing I hopefully wasn't going to die was for him to take it over. He had to sign a one year with him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, what do you and mean like, sign a one year? Just tell that person to shove it yeah, up their ass. Yeah, that's the funniest part is, yeah, there's, there's, for those watching, there's, there's no repercussion. You just go, yeah, no. And you just call your credit it. card company and you tell them, don't allow them to take any more money. Yeah. yeah. Simple. Yeah. 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 Like, no. like, if you're a good coach, you shouldn't need to trap people with a contract. Do you think Chris Aceto has people signing <clears throat> shit? No. Yeah. God, no. Mm -hmm. no. Like, come on. I it's think actually that's, I, like my in I think my that's questionnaire just, that's part ludicrous. of it is this is month to month for everyone and what yes. re-ups the contract is when you pay again. That's mm, it. Yeah. And if you stop, it's fine. I mean, it literally says it because my whole thing is this every month I'm earning the right to train you again. And if yeah. I don't earn it, we're done. Or if you don't want to anymore or you run out of money, it doesn't matter. Like I don't want a client who doesn't want to be with me either. Like, yeah. Like if you yeah. stop checking in, like there's people where like they stop checking in and I reach out to them and I hear, Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll get right back to you. And then like another month goes by and I, ch I reach out to them again. I'm like, Hey, I mean, like you haven't checked into me forever. I'm like, yeah, I've been really busy. I'll get to you again. There comes a point where I'll just turn their payment off. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Like I've turned, I turned a guy off the other, the other day because he didn't respond to me for a little while. So he just turned his payment off. And then he, he he got back, and then all of a sudden he messaged me because he must have got the email. Yeah. And then he messaged me. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry, man. I'm going to get you a set of photos here right away. And oh, I'm like, no man. problem, man. I just didn't want to keep taking your money. Right. He's, right. Like, yeah, worries, no worries. <laughs> he's like, I'm almost done building my house, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'll reach out to you again right away. I'm still training. And I was like, okay. Yeah, but yeah. But like, shouldn't, no, I don't know. That yeah, I don't want to take people's money if they're, not, if they're not actually getting a service, you know? Yeah. 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 That said, I did have one guy who paid me for a month. And I spent all the time writing out his yeah. diet yeah. and put everything together for him. And then um, for training, I said, all right, I want you to you know, start doing what you've been doing, but send me videos and let's talk about your training. Never got back to me, never checked in once. And it was through PayPal. And then I got a dispute. He wanted his money back like three months later. Never heard back from him. I oh, gave him his money dispute. back, but he was one of the, what's that? I've, I've done that. But if you do it against, because I did the work. Yeah. I'll win that dispute. All yeah. I had to do is send it to PayPal that it was done. Yeah. It's yeah, happened I, to me I, once in, in 14 years. It happened one time. Yeah. And in fairness, 
I reached out to the lady, <clears throat> told her, and something had went on, and she said, dispute it, but I'm going to need a new PayPal. So it wasn't even her fault, oh. but something weird happened with her account, and I guess they locked out everything, and I yeah. was one of the ones that just automatically disputed. So I, and thankfully, I reached out because I was pissed when I saw it. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, I <laughs> called the guy, and of course he did. I called him right away. He didn't answer. So, And Shocking. he was one of the few people that I thought about posting his picture without his permission because I was angry. Let's I was going to post it and be like, Let's hey, now. I can't even remember what his name was. <laughs> I couldn't even remember what his name was, but if Here's it was, I was, I was going to say it and say like, hey, coaches, look out for this guy, you know, but I'm Here's glad I didn't. Here's a question for you. Here's not a that question vengeful. for you. Yeah. How much money have people not paid you? Too much. Oh. I'd probably, I'd probably be rich by now. <laughs> like you. seriously, seriously. I'm terrible at that. <clears throat> I really am. Yeah. yeah, no, it's it's been a lot, and that's, it's, some of it's your own. I mean, they're always my fault yep. when I've yep. done yep. that because I let it slide um, or you'll let it accumulate. But the thing is, is like when you're in a prep and they're, it's going well and they come on a hard time, like there's that part of me that I'm also like in the trenches with them. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, dude, like, please don't screw me. And we do the work and it goes well. And 99% of the time they pay. So, yeah. you know, th there's just that occasional, but I think it's important to understand just like loaning money. When you loan money, assume you're not getting it back. That way it's not a, a terrible thing when you don't. Yeah. Um, so you got to do that. Like as a coach, if you make that decision, understand you're making a decision that will probably or could possibly cost you the time and you won't get the money. Not the end of the world to feel good about it. Yeah. I, I had a weird one once. I helped this guy. I remember it was a 16-week prep. He looked really good. He had striated glutes. He got second out of like 10 guys. He was a light heavyweight. I remember it. Um, Jeff Smith. And, uh, and then he, uh, sorry? I was a Jeff Smith. Kidding, kidding. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry about the Jeff Smiths. Um, no, and then he, uh, he messaged me after the show and he's like, uh, he goes, hey, uh, can you, you know, t since my show's over, can you turn my payment off? And I go, yeah, yeah, no problem. Like, you know, he's like, I just can't, you know, I, I can't do like an off season or anything right now. I got to like, and I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I, I said, yeah, I turned your payment off. No problem. And I go, you know, just, you know, don't, don't blow up, watch what you eat, you know, take, you know, and I, I you know, I said, I'm going to send you this, you know, little kind of thing you can follow. And, uh, and I did. And then he messaged me again. He's like, Hey, um, I was wondering if I could get a little bit of a refund. And I go, for what? And he goes, well, my my payment came out three weeks before my show. So mm. I actually paid for an extra week after that I don't need. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but you pay by the month. Yeah. It's like, you could like keep going. You, a, you could keep, keep going after the show and start. Yeah, like I even gave you it. a rebound plan. Yeah. On like yeah. the Monday, which is technically like two days after your show. So now there's only five days left that I'm not helping you. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? How many, how many gonna, days were in that month? Because you got to do the math and you got to divide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You want to, okay, we'll break <laughs> up the calculator. $23.75. Like, $17.22. <laughs> I'm like, you want me to refund you like 25% of a month because your show was three weeks into the month? Like, come on now. Like, just yeah. weird, weird yeah. stuff. So, yeah. All right. Live, live and learn. How about yeah. this one, guys? He says, uh, also from Patreon, um, what things were challenging to you when you were north of 300 pounds? So we talked about this before, but I'm looking for like one specific things like cutting toenails, dealing with your hair, uh, trying to tie shoelaces, trying to put on a jacket. I remember trying to put on a seatbelt. I wasn't even 300, nowhere near 300 pounds. And it was very uncomfortable just to go, go over there like that. I, I remember doing that same form. Was that difficult, Scott? <sighs> you just, you just, you're on bottom. That's it. <laughs> it's not that easy. Oh, man. When your Good quads stuff. are so huge, when you're 320 plus, your quads are so huge, and and uh, and chicks try to ride you, but their knees don't touch the bed, so they're on like a because your your quads are so huge that that they can't like even you know. 
It's like got yeah, some yeah. people nodding currently that are listening to this episode right now. Any yeah. woman who's been with a big ass Bible is like, yeah, yeah, that kind of changes the game. You don't have to go froggy, girls. Froggy. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those, what are all those jokes? Girls, girls just squat all day and then 10 seconds into riding, they're like, oh, my knees. <laughs> Oh my knees! Oh, very valid. Very valid. You, you do lunges three times a week. What do you mean your knees? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> suck it up. Oh, very, very true, very true. Oh man, that's good stuff. I, I think we um, answered that. I think we answered that. Answered that. Oh, I mean, yeah. this, this is a group answer this time. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, what's an ideal body fat for a natural guy for growing? He says, should you be like 8 to 12% body fat anywhere else in between that? Thanks and love the show. Ah, you know, I don't see, like, I know I got a little fatter than I probably needed to, um, you know, like a dozen times or so. Um, but uh, I, I don't think, like, there's anything wrong with that 10 to 12%. I mean, you're still pretty mm -hmm. lean at 10 to 12%. I would even say up to, like, 14 is acceptable for, like, a big dude off season. Um, but again, like, what do these numbers mean? Are we talking DEXA scans or, you know, calipers, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard to say, but yeah, I mean, like a big dude dropping 50 pounds for a show is not that out of, you know, it's not that crazy, no. you know, 40 pounds, a little bit better maybe, but you know, there's room for it. I think, I, I think that you kind of nailed it, which is I used to always, if I was going to put a number on it it'd be 14. But if I was really going to put something on, it would be if your body fat is high enough that it's negatively impacting your training, it's too high. Yeah. And that takes place. If, if oxygen is becoming an issue because you're too fat, if your lower back is tightening up all the time because you're too heavy, those are the factors I'd look at more than anything. Um, but I do think that because of social media, guys are trying to stay too lean mm -hmm. and grow especially if you're natural and or you don't want to abuse the hell out of drugs because that that is a missing link that doesn't get talked about right now and guys are i i got a guy down the road that's eight percent body fat and he's growing and i'm like i want to see his blood work yeah because mm -hmm. it, there is a reason if you go back to the 90s and 2000s and you, if you've ever been at a bodybuilding show and you saw ronnie coleman roll in at 3 30 he wasn't lean Jay Cutler, go, being, go, go online for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. Look at that era at the Pittsburgh Pro, or, you know, when the guys would come in and guest post. They're soft because that's yeah. how you get big. Yeah, you know, huge. so, I, and, I, and I think that that is the magic, particularly as a natural, because you don't have something to enhance you beyond food and training. So you're going to need to eat, eat to grow. Yep. Yep. I see Doc. I yeah. pull up a picture of Ronnie guest posing. Yeah, buddy. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see here. These are here. You go from Pittsburgh Pro. Jeez, like I've seen it before. Boom. Yeah. There's a big Ronnie for you. And then these guys would say, "Oh, that's way too. You don't need to get that fat. It seemed to work out okay for him." Yeah. Got, no kidding. He got relatively lean come October every year. Look at this. You could still see his abs in this one. Like he's not looking too rough. Well, there. he's in great shape there. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not looking too yeah. rough there. That's, no, I mean, but it's that's like a full different time of year. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's blown out. That's like, I guarantee you that's after a show or, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's, yeah. He's yeah. tight as hell there. That's, but that's he looks, very lean. He looks pretty just bl like full blown there too. You know oh, yeah. I mean? He's got like five meals in him. Yeah, yeah. His whole life was yeah. full blown for about two decades. <laughs> I uh, I have a friend that brought Ronnie up a bunch of times for guest appearances yeah mm -hmm. and he would stay at his house and he would just say he's like man like i i it, it just became like a joke how many steaks could ronnie eat how much food could he eat while he was here like he said he would just feed him like he, it would almost be a joke like he'd, he'd try to stock his fridge with so many steaks and so much food that ronnie couldn't eat it and ronnie would eat it yeah and it just, just to prove became, that he could <laughs> yeah it just became this just incredible event whenever ronnie came to stay at his house he's like oh man get the barbecue tanks ready to go we're ready to go yeah so he said he'd eat like two 12 ounce steaks at a meal like no problem just no kidding every, like, every meal he'd eat two 12 ounce steaks all his all his carbs just shoveling food not weighing a single thing nothing getting weighed like just eat 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 yeah yep. buddy 
Yeah, buddy. All right, two more. Real quick, Jim McDonald, also from Patreon, he says, um, is there anything worse than when you've worked so hard and you were so disciplined that you earn a cheat meal and then the meal that you choose ends up sucking? Very few things in the entire world that are worse. <laughs> yeah. Including wars, yeah. death. I mean, I say the only thing worse would be like a sick puppy. Other than that, nothing. <laughs> It's funny. It's pretty, this is it's pretty bad. Fast food to me, fast food is one or the other every time. True. And and there's like a little gamble on it, you know? So every once in a while, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to get a burger at a drive-thru. I don't do it very often at all. And sometimes you get it and you're like, oh, that was so delicious, you know? And And then other times you get it and you're halfway through it and you're like, this was a terrible idea. Yeah, why? You're regretting your why life. Did, I should have gone to like, you know, I should have gone to that, that normal dry, that pickup spot and got some teriyaki beef and rice. Why the hell did I do this? Like, and it's just not nearly as good as you were hoping. So yeah, there's that little risk. I did a, uh, Ron, you'll love this, but I had like a flashback conversation about Burger King back in the day. And it used to be like phenomenal. And then I went back years later and it was garbage. Terrible. I mean, I really did garbage. Yeah. And so Burger I don't King's know what terrible. happened, but but I got this like wild hair that I was going to go to Burger King. So I went to the one down the road here and it was closed. And the worst part was I go to the side says, sorry, we're closed. No D. I was like, you run out of ink? Close. So now I'm irritated. So I was like, whatever. Next week. And stubborn. I'll go. I tell Nikki, I go back. It's closed again. I'm like, huh. Bur- Burger King must still suck. Yeah. So finally... I'm going to Burger King and Taylor goes, there's one on Pelham. Go to that one. Oh, so I go to that one. I bring it home and it was everything I remembered from years ago. It was worth the struggle I went through. Really? I literally took a bite of a Whopper and I was like, I don't know if it was the struggle that made it so good or if it was actually (laughs) that good, (laughs) but it was. So anybody who's listening again, if your Burger King sucks, that's on you. But the one on Pelham the one with the homeless lady in the front, that one's good. <laughs> I've been there once. I know this. You know what I haven't had uh. for Burger King in years? <laughs> you know, like, I'm talking years, and I loved them, were their French toast sticks. Those things were Ooh. really good. Oh, I forgot those about really those. Good. Yeah. They got a nice, like, wow. McFlurry generic thing there. There's only like, two flavors, but Taylor accompanied me on this trip to the Pelham okay. one, and she got one. And I was like, oh, that thing fucks for sure. It was <laughs> amazing looking. So for those who are there picking up their Whopper that they might be disappointed in, you'll be fine with the dessert. Yes. I still haven't gone to Chick-fil-A, stuff. by the way. I haven't had the opportunity, but I'm you. not going to let the line detour me when that opportunity no. does arise. Yes. They're efficient. Yeah. And yeah. get the cookies. Remember the cookies. I, oh, yeah. I, oh, I'm getting I, the, I Also, haven't... somebody mentioned that Costco cookies are real good. I'll probably be trying those sooner than, than the Chick-fil-A sandwich. Well, yeah, you're there more often. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, yeah. book your travel through Costco for anybody who's watching this show. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. So, you know, we do the Dominican deal. So we decided to go back and we're like, all right, let's just do the same thing. It was awesome. Okay. And Nikki tells her uh, PT this. She's like, oh, yeah, we're going to go back to the Dominican. She goes, oh, did you book yet? And she said, no, but we just looked it up and it's going to be just under eight grand for the week. Everything, flights, the whole thing. And she goes, oh, book it through Costco. She's like, why? It's way cheaper. $5,600. Really? For everything for the same deal. Huh. I was like, they felt free all of a sudden. I was like, huh. It's like two grand literally saved just by ordering it through them. Wow. Yeah. So there you go. Everybody in Costco, you're welcome. You owe me again. I heard they're selling selling gold now. Well, it was under 8,000. You can buy gold from Costco too. Well, you could do that if you're not smart enough to buy Bitcoin. Um, <clears throat> well, you don't. You don't want to put it all in Bitcoin. You know what I mean? You, it's for the, uh, the yeah, the money that you We're want to keep. On. The money that you want to keep. All you in. know, all in. Run, all the same in? Thing. All in? <laughs> I'm not going all in. Hedge that U.S. dollar. Hedge that U.S. dollar. <laughs> yeah. Hundreds a yeah, week yeah. for years. That's the magic. Yeah. <clears> oh, <man. laughs> okay. All right, we we, I've, uh, we do have more, but we could. I think this is a good place that we I think we can end it on McDonald's okay. and travel. It's perfect. Yeah, or really, yeah. working. Goodness, I'm. I might have some KFC today because of Ooh. this talk. Oh, 
I've been driving. Jay wasn't Camp impressed when he went. Yeah, Jay I saw that. Video. I saw Jay he first time impressed. in fifty years. He yeah, never had KFC. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like those tenders. Those like original recipe tenders. Those are amazing. So I'm gonna go get, get the hot those, sauce. Get the hot sauce. Trust me, it's good to throw mm-hmm. right on them. Okay. Yes. I'll think about I know it. Not, it's not white. It's red. No, no, I know. But uh, how hot? You know, is it like? <laughs> no, no, know, I'm not into this. Canadian hot? No, like, no, no. Yeah, okay. No, it's it's okay. not like Canadian cold. It's it's a mild yeah. thing. Okay. We did get okay. multiple comments like this one. Ron Subway. Isn't that a sandwich? Ron said he ate Subway every day for a long time. Totally Other thing. Years. Listen okay. to what he put on it. Chicken, bread. Is there anything else that was on your sandwich? There was a you bit didn't of put cheese. lettuce on. Some cheese. No, cheese. No. Yeah. See? The, the, the hatred of sandwiches is in like letting other people decide what's on it. Like ordering <laughs> a sandwich at a restaurant. Like, I'll just get the like, people just go, uh, give me the club. And then they just keep talking. Yeah. And I'm like. No, no, don't you have questions? Don't you want to know exactly what's on it? Like, what's on that club? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's that's a good club. I don't know whatever they put on it. See, some people thought maybe you burnt yourself out from eating all those sandwiches. No, no. I did for a while, though. I didn't have Subway for a while. Yeah, I took a little break. There was a a whole debate in the comments on YouTube. (laughs) It went sideways. Ron ate a lot of sandwiches. It turns out he's been lying to us for all these years. He was was hoarding the sandwiches for himself, is what he was doing. Burned myself out. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, okay, we're going to use thanks, the Patreon gentlemen. money this year to get Ron a new internet. We think we need yeah, new internet for Ron. It's been awful the whole show. The whole episode. My, my image is awful? Really? It's awful. Yes. It's terrible. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you, I look at, it looks like I'm watching TV in the 90s or the 80s. You could have sent a little message. I thought it was all right. Well, it cleared up. And then, so I was going to. I was going to say, like, hey, let's reconnect. Uh, but then it cleared up. and then it, But then it went back to awful again. I would right, have it awful myself because I was like, you know what? This is my moment to be better looking than Ron. Your moment to shine. Yeah, taking. that's uh, that's interesting. It looks fine to me. Oh, he's coming back. There goes my moment. It's already ending. Looks yeah. fine to me. It's looking okay. better. It's looking better. As we okay. Speak. Yes. Okay. Well, remember, like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. I even hit it. Jeez. There you go. Remember, <laughs> imutant.com, Dusty tr- 20, Big Ron 20. Get your ISO surge, get your all in, and everyone get on the gear. Patreon, think big bodybuilding. Thank you guys. Keep a producer homed. Thanks for everything. Thanks for your questions, Patreon questions, YouTube questions. Uh, I'm going to go on the YouTube today and I comment a little bit more and you know answer some of the stuff that's on there because that branch got got the branch video got quite a bit of uh, comments on it. So I'll look at that oh, one right. today. Okay, guys, look what's, forward to the next one. What's the deal? What's you're you're going to be traveling or something coming up here? What's going on? Yeah, so uh, I've got uh, Sunday. Yeah, I've got it. on Sunday I leave for Europe again. So I'm going to England for a couple of days. Nice. I'm shooting an episode of Mutant on a Mission at the Shed with Hollings. Oh, oh, nice! And he's going to be five days out because he's leaving the next day for Detroit. Oh, that's so, cool. So he's actually gonna. He's like, no, no, we'll do the episode. He was like, I got to train. Why not? Yeah, I was nice. like, okay. So we're gonna do the episode. JP said he's gonna stop by and do like a bit with me. Or something oh, nice. like that. Like he's gonna he's gonna be in it. Nice. He's not gonna train, I don't think. Um, and then uh, flying to Frankfurt, and I've got a gym lined up there, a German gym nice. owned by David Hoffman. Anyone knows David Hoffman from Germany? He was a pro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, people remember him from the Universal ads. He was like in those old Universal oh, ads yeah. with Antoine yeah. back in the day. Yeah. David Hoffman's got a gym now in Koblenz, so I'm gonna go there and train with David and uh, and uh, film an episode of Mutant on a Mission, and then head up to Cologne for the weekend. All right. So, so is does that mean our how long are we off then? Well, I'm gone Sunday to the following Monday night. Okay. So we, we could may... do we could do a Monday. I'll bring in a I'll bring in a, a, a side guest here. Okay. We could say a side we'll piece. No. So I say? can't say that anymore. No. No. It gets me in trouble. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> we'll bring in a not yeah. Good. That sounds good. We'll figure something out then. So we'll be here Monday without Ron. And then uh, we'll figure something out for the next week. If you're free, maybe a live or something the following week or something like totally. that. Because you guys are both going to we'll be, be back for that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Just wanted to let okay. the people. I wanted to see what I was doing. I was letting the people know ahead of time. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good, guys. Remember, everybody, it's just bodybuilding.